People often ask me what it's like going into prison as a volunteer. There are two different questions they are getting at when they ask this. The first is about the process of literally getting into prison. The second is more about who I meet in prison and if I feel safe. My name is Isaac Wingfield and I'm a photographer and educator. I've been volunteering in prisons for the past five years. I usually work with the same men for 10 weeks, talking about their experiences and working collaboratively to make photographs that reflect their vision. As for the first question, going inside is incredibly straightforward, but it's also totally unpredictable. This is exactly how prisons function both predictably mundane and yet somehow never the same. But let's get started at the beginning. Before you can go into prison, you have to pass a background check and list any friends or relatives incarcerated in the system. If anything seems questionable, the warden makes the final decision at that facility. The dress code for prisons is pretty extensive. Socks and shoes are required, so no sandals allowed. No holes in clothing, no tight clothing like leggings, but also no loose clothing. It's a bit open to interpretation, so it's always best to play it safe. You don't want to be turned away right at the door. When you show up to the facility, you leave everything locked in your car, except your state ID and your car keys. Inside, you sign in and pass off your ID to the officer at the front desk. Then, you wait. There is always waiting involved when you go to prison. Sometimes lots of waiting, if there happens to be an emergency lockdown drill, or there are just a lot of other people going in and out of the prison. It could be during a shift change, visiting hours, or just people being processed into the prison from another facility. There's only one way for people to get in and out of the prison, so it can be a really busy place. Once the officer at the front desk finally makes sure you're cleared to go into the prison, then you get your ID back along with your paperwork and head down to the bubble. The bubble is just the gate. It usually has several glass sliding doors to the lobby, to the prison, and maybe to a locker room or to no contact visiting rooms. In the bubble, you go through a metal detector, remove your shoes and socks for inspection, and get a pat down. You have to open your mouth and show underneath your tongue, and you might have to turn your pockets inside out or let down your long hair. Everything depends on the correctional officer or CO who is processing you. The pat down might be quick and casual, or it might be the most thorough pat down you've ever been subjected to. And of course, don't forget to sign in yet again. In the bubble, you also get a personal protective device or PPD. It looks like a garage door opener from the 1970s made so you can attach it to your belt. If you're ever in a pickle, you just press the button and you would suddenly attract a lot of attention from a whole bunch of COs who all decided to come and check in on you at the very same time. After you get the PPD, they'll open the gate and you're in. Whew. Going out is pretty much the same in reverse. Thankfully, minus the pat down. That's the what of what's it like going into a prison. As for the second question about the people I've met and how safe I feel in prison, that's much easier to answer. I've never even thought about using the PPD. I feel just as safe in prison as I do in the free world, if not even a little bit safer. Everyone is super excited to be in the workshop and no one wants to do anything that might jeopardize their participation. Just like the students who enroll in my classes, the people I meet in prison workshops all come for different reasons. 
Some people are eager to learn anything and everything that they can while they're in prison. Some people are looking for another creative outlet. Some people are bored and looking for something, anything that is outside ordinary prison life. Some people are just excited about meeting new folks or getting a vicarious connection to life on the outside. People who haven't volunteered in prison miss hearing the voices and stories of men and women who are incarcerated. The photos are a taste, but you should hear some of the previous participants in their own words. I am 44 years old now. And when I was 16, I went to prison. Um, I was incarcerated for 25 years. I came home when I was 41. I didn't have no clear vision of how to go about making sure that I came out a better person when I was sentenced to spend the rest of my life in prison. I was told that I was going to die in there. I took great pride in learning everything that I could. I did 25 years, two weeks, and five days. I went in at 17 years old. I resurfaced at 43. When you're in there, there's no um, reminder of what the world has to offer. You know, it's just this one straightforward world that, you know, you ultimately forget about things that are happening out there or getting out it makes you realize okay all of these things are available now but in there they're not available so there's that grabbing at straws to find a some sense of normalcy some reminder of society sometimes we don't have anything else to look forward to and your presence make a difference one of the things that I think people should know before they volunteer is that if you have a heart, there are, there's a chance that you're gonna become emotionally attached to the people that you come in contact with. Listening to their stories, their background, um, you know, if, if you have compassion, you, you're going to be overwhelmed to a degree. What's well, some other pictures I took? Uh, Max, Mac the dog was, uh, you know, my buddy. And it, there's another thing, you know, the dog program and taking a picture of that and how important it is for people to, to be humanized with animals because you couldn't really humanize yourself with the other people around you. It was so weird because, you know, I grew up, I had dogs my entire life as a kid and cats and raccoon and, you know, I had all that stuff. and. 20 years went by before I saw a dog again. And I remember when I touched him, it felt weird almost because he was warm and he was alive and I was like, man, I forgot this. Regardless of why they come, people I've met volunteering in prison are some of the most genuine, thoughtful, and amazing people that I've ever met. Their outlook on life and appreciation for every moment challenges me to live my life more fully regardless of my circumstances. I am grateful for this opportunity to experience life as an adult in society. Take advantage of life because it is absolutely wonderful if you let it be. And that's really, I think, the greatest thing that I've learned. Because out here it is amazing.